Okay, this is a, uh, a, a quick, uh, hang on a minute. This is a quick, you know, probably saw my bike over there. I'd rather talk about that. Yeah, me too. Uh, first of all, disclaimer. Um, use these videos at your own risk. This is uh, educational intentions. I don't want anybody getting hurt, so don't do anything unless you're properly trained, EPA certified, the whole nine yards. Now, right now, in the back shot here, uh, is an isomatic uh, ICE-800 ICE air-cooled self-contained half-dice cuber. Uh, ICE-806HA3, third generation air-cooled half-dice isomatic. Personally, professionally, this is my cup of tea. This is where I shine. This is where that I've known I've known for um, fixing problems that can't be fixed with ice machines. And I'm not here to toot my own horn, but I got 28 years of experience. I've been to countless Manitowoc seminars, Oshisaki, Scotsman, Isomatic, and the industry has changed and the technology has changed so much. Uh, it's at the point now where some cubers, you can hook a laptop up to them and, and pull information out of them, which is um, intriguing, uh, but possibly overkill, over-engineering. I mean, the wheel, say here, the wheel here, okay? The wheel, and the wheel on here, my CBR 600. And, why well, Yamaha? Well, I can't spin it because it's up too high. Anyway, the wheel is round. And in an effort just to improve the wheel, we're not going to put corners on it. So, we can put better bearings on it, make it stronger, lighter, things of that nature, but the wheel needs to stay round. Just think about it. So the point is that some stuff, in my opinion, in this industry is over-engineered. You don't need a computer on a toaster or a hair dryer or a blow dryer. Just leave well enough alone. Just make it better and more efficient. And I'm not a huge green, uh, green person, but if you can make things more efficient, because water is going to go through the roof. So... That should be addressed more so in energy consumption, which it is. But that's catch-22, at least with ice machines, because it causes harvest issues, and it's a little beyond what I'm going to talk about here, because this is introductory. But enough of my opinions. This is an isomatic 800 self-contained ice machine. Now, right now, I think this is the best cuber on the market. Oh, no, you crazy you know like hey listen there's opinions on everything everybody is making a great machine my opinion this is the best one on this date which is february 6 2012 my opinion and i'll show you why all right first of all it is a water float system inlet which is down here now this machine's not hooked up, obviously, sitting on a skid. And you got your quarter-inch refrigeration size. I will always say refrigeration size. Oh, no, that's plumber size. Like, eh, refrigeration, okay. And it goes through the back of the bulkhead. Because we are refrigeration experts now, aren't we? And a quarter-inch line for the, for the water goes to the float, comes back through, and connects to 3 8 female pipe thread. Where is it? Right there. Okay. Very, very simple. And there's a lot of different philosophies in engineering as you shouldn't be using a float. I personally like the floats. There's some machines out there that use electromechanical solenoid, water solenoids, which are usually mounted behind this fitting here. And there would be a water inlet valve right here. But see, there's no mechanical, which is technically one less part, but the float is a part, so that's not necessarily an accurate statement. But I would say there's a lot less things to go wrong with this float if you have the right water pressure and good water. You have to have good water. 
go into an ice machine, period, which I'd prefer filtered. Uh, what's next? Well, I'll just break it down by the water circuit. And essentially, that's it for water coming in. Now, to take off the water circuit, it's as simple as that. Let me shove this back here because I have a lot of room. Now, I said water. Now, this is a machine that was damaged by shipping. And I'm sure the, the cannon, besides picking up my hand shaking, is showing some deposits there, which is hard water. I think this machine came out of came out of Chicago, the city somewhere. But it's relatively clean. You know, I don't know how many hours it has on it. It is a 2010. So if that's two years of being dirty without being clean, that's pretty good. I don't really see, I see a little bit of sediment in the bottom here. But I don't see any um, horrible water conditions. Now, really quick about the construction of this machine, because I overlooked it. If you look, if you look here, you look here, and you look down there, we're just going to see insulation down there. But if you look here, what do you see? What do you see there? You look everywhere and every angle on this machine, you see nothing but high-grade stainless steel. Now, I've been to the factory in Denver, and I've seen these machines made, and it's nothing short of impressive. Uh, in my opinion, stainless is the best thing to, to make out of your machine or some type of metal, and uh, this is one of the few machines on the market, including the bottom of it, the bulkhead, is made out of stainless steel. That's another reason why I like isomatic. And uh, <clears throat> although I consider myself quite possibly an old timer with 28 years in here, I do have an open mind. And at one point in my career, I would have not recommended these machines. But today's a different day. This machine is well built. The only thing that isn't stainless in here is the water trough. And that would be overkill, in my opinion, and the plastic float. So to get back to the water circuit, you have your water pump that there's your discharge hose that comes up and it goes through that water distributor tube, trickles down, goes into the sump, comes back, and the water flow is maintained approximately to this level, thereabouts. You don't want to overfill it because then water will come out of the trough here and spill into the bin. You don't want it to be too low because then the water pump will start cavitating and you won't pump any water over the evaporator, which is this. So, we'll put the water curtain back on. And that's with the water curtain back on. So, now as far as electric goes, I'm going to break it into that. Uh, anything above a 500 pound machine is uh, 208, 230 and anything below that is 115 and uh, you get into 208, 230 single phase and three phase machines all the way up to I think was it 1800, 19, 1900 pound machine by isomatic give or take. Uh, there is one machine, well this is self contained so I'm going to stick with this but there is a remote that uh, isomatic has that puts out 1500 pounds in a 30 inch wide base which is a uh, a uh, ICE 1500, but we don't want to talk about that. This is a self-contained machine, which essentially means um, no, it doesn't come with power and it doesn't come with water because uh, it's sometimes a consumer. Oh, there's a real dryer, by the way. From the last video on the milk coolers, that's that's a dryer. That's what you want to use. Uh, but to finish up the water circuit, here's your dump valve, purge valve. And uh, that opens every time the machine goes into harvest. So that pumps the water down the drain and all the solids and hooks up to this three quarter inch female pipe fitting, which should be vented with a T and um, goes down the drain. So, electrically, real basic. If you push this, which says push to perch sump. So when you push that and it's on a spring-loaded rocker arm, you can't 
you know, unless you really try to break it or push it, it springs back. And that energizes your dump valve. And that helps in, in a diagnostic way that if everything's supposed to be doing and this energizes, then from what I remember, it means uh, your cam switch is, uh, is fine. Because otherwise you couldn't power it. But you got to look at the schematic. And they keep changing wiring on here, so I could be wrong. And I will be wrong. I'm human. But uh, here's your off in the middle rocker switch. Left is ice. Put it to ice when you want ice. And wash when you want wash. Now the nice thing about this machine is there's no magic circuit board in it. It's all electrical and mechanical. And uh, we're going to grab a screwdriver here. Let's see if I can... At least yank the top off of this and get some bird's eye shot of it. Okay, there's your potential relay for your compressor. There is your um, finishing timer after your low pressure control um, harvest initiate control. Initiate control? Um, after low pressure cut-in control, reverse acting makes on pressure drop because of ice formation and a lower load, your timer is energized, and that's a timer on make. So it will time out all these little um, slides here are uh, sequenced in seconds, and when you add these up, what's that, 1, 3, my, my eyes are bad, so I don't even know if you can see that, uh, 16, 32, uh, and up is on so you add all those together to finish the bridge on your ice th ice thickness and um, it's pretty reliable there's a little control relay in there there's two relays if I'm not mistaken I don't really want to waste a lot of time pulling this thing off and you know what I'm not going to because it, it'll be in further detail we get into ice machines. This is just introduction here. So, um, another thing about electric is this on an isomatic is the water curtain switch. So every time the water curtain goes in and out from the ice falling, makes and breaks this switch. Now, all this switch does is control the machine to shut it off when it's on a full bin. It does not terminate harvest or defrost or whatever you want to call it. That is not this machine. It's a different machine. What terminates